Anyone can make $5,000 in one day using this strategy right here. Come on, come on over here, check this out. So this right here, I actually broke down in my last video and we actually implemented with a brand that I actually worked with. And over the course of one day, they did $5,000 in sales and they did an additional $2,000 for the next two days. And I did two months revenue in one day. Once again, thank you, bro. Thank so in total, over $7,000 in revenue. And honestly, you could do this too. Let's go ahead and break this down a little bit more. So if you watched my previous video, you would have seen where I flew to Chicago to help a clone brand relaunch. And now whenever you are relaunching your brand or launching any product for that matter, there are a series of things that you should do. And although I did showcase this right here, there are a few steps that go before this. Let's go ahead and play this video so you understand exactly how this works. So Joshua already had a few sales. And by having a few sales, that means some of these customers were already on his text list and his email list. But a lot of the times, customers opt out for the text messages and they only sign up for email because they want their tracking and confirmation. Text typically does get more conversions. So we decided to set up a few email campaigns that have call to actions for the customers to sign up for the text notifications as well. Now that doesn't mean email is obsolete. Email is still a powerful way that you should use to tell your story. That way you could turn some of these sales to more reoccurring customers. This is a really good way to warm them up so that you get more sales. Joshua also has a decent amount of followers. We need to turn them into sales as well. Now sometimes some of these followers also signs up for the email list even though they have yet to purchase anything. Which once again is the reason why telling a story to warming up the audience is truly important. Because once you're able to do that, it will be easier for you to get them to convert into some actual sales. Now, when it comes to sales as a newer brand, a lot of times brands are always thinking about making profit from the very beginning. I would highly recommend thinking about a lost leader or something that you make a small amount of profit with. Now, I'm not saying throw profit out of the window. Just really think about, is there anything that you can provide that a customer can easily convert on? For example, grocery stores sells milk, eggs, rice, and other inexpensive items, sometimes at a break even or even at a loss. And the reason being, is to get the customer into the store and make an actual purchase and you can upsell them with a different product at the same time or they can just fall in love with your actual store itself so that they can become a customer at a later time. Now once you do get a sale it is important that you fulfill in a decent amount of time so that your customer becomes as happy as possible and they become a returning customer. There's a big difference between sales and customers. Now when it comes time to release a new product or a new design a mistake that a lot of brands make is that just releasing the product unexpectedly and hoping that the customer Customer converts. So what we had to do was tell the story of the new design, the new product. We had to really hype them up with the date that it was coming out on and the quantity that was being released or basically anything that makes the customer feel urgent to purchase the product. So not only do we warm them up to fall in love with our brand, but we have to make them fall in love with every single new product. We have to make the customer feel really excited for the product's release so that we can get some more sales, which in turn creates a cycle that we can rinse and repeat. Now we have to fulfill this product once again, make the customer happy happy so that they can become a returning customer. And once again, if this is a new customer, they'll opt into our email flow so that we can tell them the story of our brand once again. Now that we came up with a strategy, we implement it and let's see the live results of what happened. So you might be saying, I don't have any sales yet. I don't have any followers. This is not relevant to me. But in reality, it certainly is because you still need to have all these processes down before you even get the followers or any types of leads whatsoever. So if a customer is coming into your whole ecosystem and you don't have any kind of message or story to tell them, then you pretty much have a wasted new follower, a wasted lead and a wasted potential sale. So these are things that you still need to integrate into your actual brand. This is how you can really nurture the customer so that they can fall in love for your actual products. But before getting into all of this, you need to have some form of traffic to get here. So what kind of forms of traffic are there? You have content, obviously, like what you're watching right now. Anywhere on social media is powerful. TikTok is going crazy. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it may be, that is traffic. And any type of content that you can create and post on there and they can come to you without paying for it, that's organic traffic. And then all of these platforms also have paid ways of being able to do so as well. So if you're paying for traffic, you're probably paying for the ads on Facebook. You're probably paying for the ads on Instagram. You're probably paying for the ads on TikTok. But once this traffic comes to your actual ecosystem, you need to have a way to nurture all of these potential customers. That's why this whole system right here is important. But there are more variables to it than just this alone. So when I worked with this brand, we really didn't have a problem of creating the actual product. So you could have all of these things in place and it still won't work for you if you still have some variables incorrect with your brand. For one, you still need to have a 
good product. So one way we were able to validate if we had a good product or not is we went on a platform like Etsy and Amazon and whatnot. We checked to see which products were already doing well within our niche, even though we're not selling on these platforms. Obviously, if you're not new to the channel, you would know I made a bulk of my income using Etsy and Amazon. However, that doesn't mean that these platforms are obsolete, even if you're selling on your own website, because this whole strategy pretty much works for you selling on your own platform, not necessarily on the marketplace. So what we did is we went on Etsy, we typed in suicide prevention shirt, and then we took a look at all the products that people were already selling. This gave us inspiration on the products that we wanted to relaunch. So to dive even deeper, I use this website called Everbe, and this pretty much gives me the analytics of these products. So this right here is suicide prevention t-shirts. So the sales might not be too crazy because this is fairly niche down, but before we get a little bit wider, here's like one way we can validate things. So as you can see, something like this is doing $655 a month. If we look at it, it says the world is better with you in it. It looks like that's what that says. So we know this type of design is doing fairly well. And this cartoon groovy style has been in a while. And I can show you exactly how to design it as well. But see, if we scroll all the way down, let's see. And if we had an idea for through every dark night, there's a brighter day. But this t-shirt right here is not getting any type of sales according to the analytics itself. But I can tell you why already. I mean, obviously, look at the design. It's okay, right? But whenever you look at something like this, you can see the total difference and that already gives us a clue to pretty much head in the design direction of something like this because something like this is already getting sales so now I went ahead and took a step backwards once again this time I typed in motivational T hopefully it's a little bit wider of a search and this helps me see more products that we could get inspired by and as you can see we see this right here a few times with the sleeve print that gives me a clue that that's something that we could possibly look into and here I am again sorted by monthly revenue this right here is going crazy but that's that's not relevant to what we are selling. Here we have the one with the sleeve print. And as you can see, it's doing roughly $2,400 a month in sales. So cool. This might be something that we want to think about, right? And now this is cool. So this is how we validated a product that we could actually sell. So now we have a product that actually works right here in this entire strategy. Because if this product didn't even work to begin with, then you won't even be able to cross this entire line and get an actual sale. So like I was saying in the last video, I worked with Joshua and AdmireWare. As you can see, he incorporated something similar in one one of his products he has the logo across the chest and then he has this right here every day i grow stronger wiser more resilient so basically this is a reminder on your sleeve so if you're wearing this product you know you pretty much has a message reminder to yourself so this is a very motivational hoodie and product and as you can see sold out and now i did want to respond to this comment in the previous video could you explain how the orders work whenever you are linking with printify so for those of you who don't know printify is a print on demand platform who prints and ships your products for you now most of these products aren't print on demand but there are a few of the products on here that we did decide to go with print on demand because there are still nice high margin products that we could actually use for the brand and what i highly suggest whenever you are selling a brand on your own product and it is print on demand one thing that joshua did was still order the product and took his own photos and that looks amazing and that pretty much puts you a step forward but to really explain how it works there's hundreds of products right here on printify and you can pretty much integrate this platform with your website and if you click on a product you can upload your design to it so they're pretty much blank products and you can upload your design to it and sync it with your actual website. So if you go to the integrations page on Printify, you can link Printify with your actual Shopify store if you're selling on that platform. And then once you link a product, it will connect with your Shopify store and it will be visible to your customers. And now when a customer checks out with that product, Printify will automatically print and ship this to your customer for you. However, if you are shipping multiple items that are not print on demand, Printify will only ship that one single item that you have synced as a product on your website. All the other products that a customer may have checked out on you will still have to ship that to the customer yourself so if you are mixing in print on demand with other products on your website you may want to leave a note somewhere that this product may ship separately from the rest of their cart so for most brands i wouldn't recommend using print on demand indefinitely but it is something that you can think about if you're just starting off so that you can start to collect those funds and that was another question as well so when a customer checks out that money goes into your shopify platform or whatever platform you are using and that money is released to you it is still up to you to pay Printify separately so that they can print and ship the product to your customer for you. Now, it also doesn't have to be set to automatic. So sometimes if a customer checks out, Printify will already automatically ship and fulfill it, but you can manually approve each and every single order as well within the settings. So depending on the platform you are using, for example, if you're using Shopify, if you just started, sometimes they may hold your funds for a week or so. 
So if a customer checks out, you still need to have the funds to pay Printify to begin with before you even receive your funds from Shopify. So if you haven't started incorporating this system into your business just yet, go ahead and take a look at it and see if this is something that works for you.